So, so far in our lectures, we've seen about the relativistic string and we've seen the solution for the relativistic string, right? So, now we're going to quantize the string. So, that means, as I said, this was the solution that we had seen for the relativistic string. And as I said, these are plane wave solutions. So, it brings the harmonic oscillator into picture. And if you want to quantize the theory, you just convert the uh, harmonic oscillator into a quantum harmonic oscillator. Therefore, these coefficients will just become our creation and annihilation operators of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So, this is what we're going to do. So, this is going to be the alpha n is going to be your annihilation operator and alpha minus n is going to be your creation operator. So, i is your transverse coordinate. So, here you can see the coefficients are replaced by these operators and now our uh, string is quantized, right? So, this is the uh, dagger symbol that you normally see with your creation operator. It's the Hermitian conjugate. So, you get your creation operator, okay? So, this is just quantizing the string. So, you just quantize the string and this is normally called the oscillator, quantum oscillator mode expansion of the uh, string, okay? So, this n refers to the mode, right? So, the sum over n refers to the mode or we when we're talking about the oscillator we generally talk about the frequency and now we are talking about the it's same as saying the mode different modes of vibration okay so here it's each corresponds to one particular eigenvalue okay so now let us uh, we had earlier in our when we were calculating we were talking about the uh, transverse virasoro uh, mode, right? So the transverse Virasoro mode, and then we had computed the mass square. Now, when we are, these were computed in terms of these coefficients. Now that our coefficients have become operators, now these are also the transverse Virasoro mode, and the mass square is now going to be the operator, it's going to become a operator. So this is an operator, and the mass square also becomes an operator. So now, however, when we you must remember that when we are talking about operators, uh, quantum when we are talking about operators in quantum mechanics, they do generally do not commute. They are not necessarily all operators commute. So the fact that they don't commute will uh, contribute to a constant. Meaning generally, uh, this constant refers to how much they don't commute. Okay. So here, the n is equal to zero. Uh, contribution does is the one that responsible for the how much they do not commute and that is revealed by this constant here this d is the dimension of space dimension of space time okay this d is the dimension and here there is just a infinite series over p so this is just a constant right so here we are going to uh, as i said it the n uh, only zero the value n is equal to zero only contributes to this so therefore we write it out separately and the rest of the terms in the series we write it in this summation now when we write the mass square you remember the ln right this viras the transverse viras or operator also comes into picture that is uh, this term here so here also we will have this additive constant right so that uh, because these are operators and the fact that they do not commute will be uh, will reflect in this constant that is what is supposed to mean now we said this here the constant is this is what we just said the constant was so is a the constant here in mass square operator also equal to the same uh, constant that we were talking about here now to check that let's talk about this infinite series that we have here okay so this is called the so remember this is your zeta function and for value equals where the s value is equal to minus 1 remember when s value is equal to minus 1 this just becomes you can just write this as when s is equal to minus 1 this just becomes n right summation over n right going from n is equal to 1 to infinity right so that is the same as this 
series, right? That is the same as this series. And that is evaluated, that infinite series is nothing but the value is equal to minus 1 by 10, okay? So, if this value, the value of this infinite series is minus 1 by 12, then you can see that the value of A then would become, this will become minus 1 by 12, it multiplies with half, therefore this will just be minus 124, sorry, minus 1 by 24 and D minus 2. So, this is the value that we have. So, why is this significant? Why are we doing this? We are doing this because there is an interesting answer that comes for the value of d. Now, I will tell you why that is. So, there are some operators called Lorentz generators. Okay, so these generate uh, Lorentz uh, symmetry. So, before that, you have to know something called Noether's theorem. Okay, so there is something called uh, Noether's theorem. So, if you have studied your classical field theory, you would have studied about Noether's theorem. So, this is a very advanced course, right, in string theory. So, all these prerequisites are actually assumed. So, if you are not sure of uh, certain things that are being mentioned, you must definitely look that up. So, in Noether's theorem, for every continuous symmetry that there is in the Lagrangian, there is a conserved current and there is a conserved charge, okay. So, here if we have, let us say there is a, uh, the continuous symmetry that there is, is in time, okay. So, uh, then uh, the generator of that symmetry is the Hamiltonian, okay. So, the generator of the symmetry is the Hamiltonian and the conserved charge there is the energy, okay. There is the conserved charge is the energy, okay. So, the, so, if you have a continuous symmetry in space, then the conserved charge there is there is the momentum. Okay, it's the momentum. So we have generators which generate this the symmetry, and here the Lorentz generators uh, generate Lorentz symmetry. Uh, they if there is a symmetry that is there in the system, the, there is a Lorentz uh, symmetry. So Lorentz uh, 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 symmetry means that there is the Lagrangian is invariant with respect to Lorentz boost and rotation. Okay, so that is what it means. So, just like how you can write the Hamiltonian in terms of operators, uh, we can write also the Lorentz generator. Okay, we can write uh, just like I said, the Hamiltonian is the generator of uh, time translations. Okay, so it is a generator of time translations. So, if there is invariance in time, then you have a uh, symmetry in the system. Uh, and then the conserved charge there is uh, energy. So, just like how the Hamiltonian generates uh, uh, the uh, time uh, translations and if there is an invariance symmetry, uh, we have Lorentz generators which can generate, we can, which we can, with which you can check the Lorentz symmetry. So, the Lorentz uh, generators can be written in terms of the operators that we were talking about. And um, just like we say, as, as like I said, the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of operators. So you know that the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of operators. You've seen that. So the for Lorentz symmetry to exist in the theory, the Lorentz operators must commute. So here you can see that uh, this is the commutator bracket, and this is with respect to uh, one uh, coordinate transverse coordinate i, and there's another transverse coordinate j. Now if these Lorentz generators must commute, this Lorentz uh, generators then uh, the commutator must be set equal to 0. So, this commutator is evaluated and now this answer must be 0, right. So, this answer must be equal to 0. So, if this must be, this answer must be equal to 0, then it means that it is equal to 0 only when these two conditions are satisfied only when these two conditions are satisfied that is a is equal to minus 1 and d is equal to 26. So, this d, so this condition fixes the space time dimension to be 26. So, you might have heard in string theory they say that we have so many, uh, it, it requires so many extra space time dimension right. So, that is because of this condition okay so this is what fixes the 
space time dimension to be 26 in a uh, string theory in open strings in relativistic quantum open strings it fixes space time dimension to be uh, 26 so uh, next we will see about uh, closed strings so we will see the difference with about open and closed strings also in the next video and we'll see about relativistic quantum closed strings and uh, uh, yeah so that would be our next video what the, our next video would be about so if you uh, like our stuff do subscribe to our channel and also let your friends know